Jackson. I am Mrs. Francis, and I will be your instructor for today's lesson. I have provided several worksheets for you to complete at the end of today's lesson. And so I want you guys to get your pens and your notebooks out, and we're going to eject into this dynamic topic of volcanoes. Let's begin by outlining some obje objectives for today. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that we can look at today's objectives. Remember that the objectives are very important as they help us when we are reviewing. The objectives also assist us when we are studying for a test. And so it's very important that we use those objectives during the lesson and that we know what they are. So guys, let's begin. For today's lesson on volcano, we one, we have to define the word volcano, two, label and identify the various parts of a volcano, three, explain the formation of a volcano, and four, evaluate the stages of volcanism. So guys, I am now going to show you a short video clip on volcanoes. Now, as you guys watch, I want you to think about the following questions. One, what is a volcano? Two, are volcanoes only found on land? And three, what is lava and what is magma? So watch attentively as the video plays and try to formulate answers to these three questions. Volcanoes are our most explosive landforms. Able to eject molten rock and clouds of thick ash high into the atmosphere with devastating consequences. Volcanoes mostly occur along destructive and constructive plate boundaries where plates are pushed together or dragged apart. or weaknesses allow magma to rise up from below the Earth's crust. Pressure builds up, which then releases suddenly, causing the magma to explode. A volcanic eruption. The magma that reaches the Earth's surface is called lava. This molten lava eventually cools to form new rock. After more eruptions over time, a mound of rock builds up, forming a cone-shaped volcano. All right. So I hope you guys listened carefully to the video and that you have some ideas now as to what is a volcano. So let's dive into that. Students, what exactly is a volcano? I'm going to give you a few seconds to type your answers in. Awesome. So I see some of, some of you have a good idea of what a volcano is. So let's look at it. A volcano is basically a landform usually a mountain where you have molten rock erupting through the Earth's surface, okay? Or we can say that a volcano is basically a mountain that opens downward to a pool of molten rock below the Earth's surface. So I see that you generally have a good idea of what a volcano is. Now let's move on to how are volcanoes formed? Well, when you think about a volcano, always remember that there is something in it called magma. Magma is liquid rock. 
Now, that magma is formed deep in the Earth's mantle. Now, if you recall, students, there are three basic layers of the Earth. You have the crust, which is the layer that we guys live on. It's the outer layer. And then you have the mantle, which is the second layer, and it is the largest layer. And remember that this is where magma is formed in the mantle. And then, of course, you have the core. So we're talking about the magma, which comes up from the mantle. When pressure builds up in the mantle, the magma is going to rise and it's going to escape from the mantle through cracks in the crust and it's going to be ejected out of a volcano, okay? When that happens, you get eruptions of lava and ash. Now, over time, these eruptions will build up and they will get larger and larger as they solidify to actually form the volcanic mountain. Volcanoes are also formed along two plate boundaries or plate margins. Now remember that the plate margins are the edge of the plates, okay? And at the edge of these plates, you have tectonic activity. So you can have earthquakes and you can have volcanoes. So volcanoes are formed along two of the three plate margins. One, they're formed along destructive plate margins, which are also called convergent plate margins. Now remember, to converge means to come together. So at a convergent or a destructive plate margin, plates are crashing into each other collision is happening. So that is one plate margins where volcanoes occur. The second type of plate margin is going to be a constructive plate margin, which is also called a divergent margin. So think about it. The first one was destructive, and then the opposite of that is constructive. So at a constructive or a divergent plate margin, what is happening? plates are now moving away from each other. They are being pulled apart. And so volcanoes occur along these types of plate margins. Now you can see I have two diagrams there, which are showing you the constructive plate margin or what we call divergent. Now notice the arrowheads, the plates are moving away from each other. They are diverging, okay? And when that happens, that causes the magma, which is coming up from the mantle, to escape. Because as the plates diverge, you get cracks within the Earth's crust. Those cracks are openings or holes. And so, and so they allow that magma to escape and to build a volcano. The other diagram shows you the convergent plate margin or the destructive one. So notice two plates are colliding towards each other, okay? And so when that happens, you get mountain building. And again, cracks appear within the Earth's crust and magma escapes, hence building a volcanic mountain. So I hope you guys understand that. Now let's move on. We want to look at why do volcanoes erupt? So I'm going to show you a short video clip. And when you look at this clip, look at all of the lava that is escaping as a result of the volcanic eruption. All right, so why do volcanoes erupt? Well, the Earth's crust is made up of large slabs. Remember earlier, I said these are called plates. The plates basically fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And the plates are simply 
the slabs of the earth that carry the continents or our land masses. And so the plates, they sometimes move about on the earth's crust because of the convection currents that are found in the mantle. So basically when all of that magma is moving in the mantle, it causes the plates to shift and to move. Now the friction that occurs near the edges of the plates causes earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, okay? And if you recall, this process is explained in a theory that we call plate tectonics. Now students, here I am showing you a diagram outlining the parts of a volcano. So think about it. If you were to take a trip inside a volcano, what would be the parts, the main parts that you would see? Okay, well, you would see a huge chamber or cavity that is called the magma chamber. Now notice the location of the magma chamber. It is found beneath the Earth's crust, okay? So it is like the belly of the volcano. It is where the majority of the magma, that liquid rock is stored. From the magma chamber, you have a main opening that goes in the center of the volcano. So this opening is called the main vent, or it can be called the central vent. So if you think about the way your body is, right? You have your stomach where all of your food goes. So your stomach is similar to the magma chamber. And then your stomach is attached to your esophagus. That is the center of your body. So your esophagus that leads to your stomach would be similar to the main vent of a volcano, all right? So you have that main vent that leads from the magma chamber and goes up to the center of the volcano. Now, sometimes the magma tries to escape through other sections of the volcano because remember, there's so much pressure going on that some of it tends to ooze out along the sides. So this will now develop a feature called a side vent. And then the other part of the volcano that you guys need to remember is the very top of the volcano where you have that opening, okay? And that opening allows the magma to escape during a volcanic eruption. And that is what we call the crater, all right? And then of course, once the volcano erupts, magma comes out and then you get lava flows, all right? So remember the parts of the volcano, the magma chamber, the main vent or central vent, you have side vents, you have the crater, and then of course you have lava that flows out. Now students, if the volcano is an explosive one, and we'll talk about that in tomorrow's lesson, but if the volcano is an explosive one, then you can have an ash cloud, okay, that appears. And the ash cloud is going to be above the crater, filled with various volcanic debris or what we call pyroclastic materials. Now, it's matchup time. So let's see if you guys can solve and match these terminologies with their definitions. So I'm um, showing you column A. I have five lists of words there that we all talked about just now crater, magma chamber, main vent, ash cloud, and side vent. And then in column B, I have five definitions. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds. Well, maybe two minutes, I should say, not seconds. And I want you to type your answers in the chat, okay? So I want you guys to match the definitions Sorry, I want you to match the words, the features in column A with their correct definitions in column B. And so what you can do is you can just put number one, crater, and then type the answer if you think it's A, B, C, or D. So let me see how well you guys can figure out these definitions with their corresponding features. So get to it.
I'm sorry. I'll put that slide back up for you. All right, students, now how well you did, all right? Let's begin with the crater. What's the correct def definition for the crater? C, and I see many of you got that correct. Very good students. In fact, give, you, give yourselves a pat on the shoulder, awesome job. Yes, the crater is an opening at the top of the volcano. What about number two? The magma chamber, yes, the answer is D. The magma chamber is a reservoir containing molten rock or magma occurring from the mantle, all right? And most of you figured that out, good job. Next, the main vent, yes, the answer was A. The main vent is the main passage through which molten rock flows in a volcano. So remember, it's the central passage that allows the magma, that liquid rock, that molten rock to flow up through the volcano. And then the ash cloud, that was an easy one. Everybody got that one correct. The ash cloud is a cloud of ash that forms in the air after the volcanic eruption. All right, and then the last one was fairly simple because it was what you had left, right? The side vent, these are basically smaller outlets. So the side vent is just a small outlet that magma uses to escape the volcano through the side. Awesome job, you guys did really well on that. So give yourselves a round of applause, yay. All right, let's move on now. Question, what is the difference between magma and lava. Remember when I played that video initially, I asked you guys to think about what was magma and what is lava. So I give you all a few seconds to type your answers in. What is the difference between magma and lava? Now, as you are typing your definitions. I am going to help you. I'm going to show you two short clips. One that sh will show you magma and the other one will show you lava. And this will hopefully get you to the correct answer. That is the magma. We were able to... And here we have lava. Awesome. So, what is the difference between magma and the lava? Well, magma is the hot molten rock found inside the volcano. So, those are the key words. It's liquid rock, molten rock that is located inside of the volcano. And I saw some of you wrote that exactly. Good job. Lava is the molten rock or the magma that reaches the Earth's surface. So lava is located on the outside of the volcano. Magma is the liquid rock or the molten rock found on the inside of the volcano. And when the volcano erupts and that liquid rock comes out, the name changes from magma to lava. And then of course, when lava cools, it hardens or it solidifies to create new rock. And we call that rock igneous rock. Good job. Now, what are the stages of volcanoes? Volcanoes essentially have a life cycle, just like us. 
we have a life cycle, right? We start out in infancy or childhood, and then we go through adolescence, and then we become adults. So just how we have various stages that we go through, volcanoes also go through stages. And so there are three stages of volcanism. Let's look at the three diagrams I've provided for you here. In the first one, you can see that it is called an active volcano. If you look at it, you can see that the magma chamber or the magma reservoir is active. Why? Look at the red coloring. It highlights the fact that there is magma in this chamber, all right, in the belly of the volcano, feeding the volcano. So once there is magma present in the magma chamber, then the volcano is going to be active, okay, which means that there is the potential for it to erupt. And then in the second diagram, if you look at it carefully, you can see that this is showing you a dormant volcano. Now pay attention to the magma chamber, guys, all right? Look at it. You can see it's halfway filled with magma, okay? So the magma chamber is slowly filling. And at the top, you see that it, there's a gray area there, meaning that it's not completely filled. So this would be a dormant volcano because if you notice, there is no magma coming up that central vent. And then the third diagram shows you an extinct volcano. Notice that the magma chamber is inactive. There's nothing there. It's completely empty, all right? So that would be an extinct volcano. So volcanoes can either be active, they can be dormant, or they can be extinct. So an active volcano is one that has erupted recently, okay? And it has the possibility of erupting again. A dormant volcano is one that has not erupted in a very long time. However, it still has the potential to erupt at a later time in the future. And then of course, we have the extinct volcano. And this is the one that volcanologists believe will never erupt again. Now, you guys know the word extinct. Dinosaurs are extinct. Are they around anymore? No, but we still have evidence that they were here. So the extinct volcano is one that was active thousands, even millions of years ago. But the magma chamber is now empty because the supply of magma has been cut off. And so volcanologists do not believe that that volcano will ever erupt again, all right? So here you see a beautiful photograph of Mount Kilauea, which is located in Hawaii. Now this is an, this is an example of an active volcano. Notice the ejections of lava spewing out of the crater. So in order to be considered active, a volcano must have erupted within the last few thousand years, all right? Now today, there are over 560 volcanoes on Earth that are active. So if you think about it, that is a lot of volcanoes that are spewing molten rock or lava into the air to create new land. Now here you see a picture of Mount Fuji or Mount Fujiyama, which is located in Japan. And this is an example of a dormant volcano. Now the word dormant means sleeping. So Mount Fuji is a sleeping volcano, all right? The last time Mount Fuji erupted was in 1707. So if you think about it, we're in 2020 and that's 1707. That's a little over 300 years. So this volcano has been sleeping for a little over 300 years. So it is a dormant volcano. So Mount Fuji is like a sleeping giant. And then of course here, you see a picture of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is in Tanzania in Africa. And this is an, is an example of an extinct volcano. 
Mount Ashitaka in Japan is also an example of an extinct volcano. So remember, extinct volcanoes were once active thousands or even millions of years ago, but their supply of magma has been cut off. And so they do not have the potential to erupt again. So they're classified as extinct. Okay, now students, how many volcanoes are there on Earth? Type in the figure for me, let's see. How many volcanoes do you think there are on Earth? Let's go to the chat. Let me see. Wow, I see some of you are saying over 100, over 500. Zaria, I see that. Oh, Naisha says over 700. Oh my gosh. Over 1,000, Jaden. Yes, there are, Jaden, you are correct. There are actually more than 1,500 volcanoes on earth okay there are more than 1500 volcanoes on earth so most of these volcanoes are on land however about 80 of them or so are actually found under the oceans so there you saw an example of a volcano found under the ocean and it was erupting, okay? And many of the underwater volcanoes are found in Iceland, okay? Now, when you think about Iceland, you'll be like, whoa, wow, it's cold there. I didn't know that volcanoes are there, but yes, there are several volcanoes in Iceland and many of them are found under the oceans. So guys, think about that. There are more than 1500 volcanoes on earth that's a lot but when you think about it mother nature is so wonderful because when volcanoes erupt that magma which comes up and remember the name changes to lava it solidifies and it forms new earth new crust so the earth rebuilds itself when a volcano erupts now let's move on where do you think most of these volcanoes are found? I'll give you a second to write your answers in the chat as well, and then I'll see how, how well you guys are doing. Where are most volcanoes found? Ah, Samuel says, yes, Samuel, you're right. Uh-huh, okay. Awesome. Clint and Samuel, I see you guys know your volcano lingo. Yes, most of the Earth's volcanoes are found in an area that is called the Ring of Fire. In fact, it's the Pacific Ring of Fire. And many of you got it right. Some of you said at the edges of place, yes, but the majority of volcanoes are actually found in an area known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, this is an area that is tectonically active. So it is frequently, it, it is um, an area that frequently has volcanic eruptions as well as earthquakes, okay? So it's tectonically active. And the Pacific Ring of Fire is basically the area where the volcanoes encircle the Pacific Ocean, all right? So I'm going to show you a map of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And here you can see it. So look at it. This is the area known as the Ring of Fire, all right? And if you look at the map, you will see that it begins from the tip of the western coast of South America, and it goes all the way up past Central America along the western coast of North America, yes? across the Bering Strait, and then it continues the circle along Japan, along the Philippines, around Indonesia, and of course, past Australia all the way down to New Zealand. So basically, that area there 
forms almost a circular ring, okay, around the Pacific Ocean. Now here you see another map showing you the distribution of volcanoes and the ring of fire. So notice all of the red dots represent one volcano, okay? So if you look at this map carefully, notice also too that Hawaii is a hot spot and it's in the center of the Pacific Ocean. And so you can see that circular path being formed by the location of the volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean. So remember, the majority of volcanoes are located around the Pacific Ocean in an area called the Ring of Fire. Good job, many of you got that right. Give yourselves a pat on the shoulder. Awesome guys, you're doing well. Now, are there volcanoes in the Caribbean? Hmm? You know that we don't have volcanoes in the Bahamas, but are there volcanoes in the Caribbean? Yes, we have volcanoes in the Caribbean. So in the Caribbean, there are more than 19 volcanoes, okay? And many of them are active. So if you were to you would find that you will come to the Eastern Caribbean, all right? There are islands such as Grenada, St. Lucia. You also have, oh, I'm sorry, let me take this off. You also have um, Martinique. You also have Dominica. And you have other islands that are smaller like Guadeloupe. And so, Volcanoes are on many of these islands. And so we call them the Lesser Antilles or the Eastern Caribbean. Now I see something has popped up on my screen here, guys. I'm trying to, to get it off. So let me see if I can get that off. Yes, there we go, all right? So yes, many of the volcanoes in the Caribbean are found along the Eastern Caribbean, okay? In an area known as the Lesser Antilles. And so I'm gonna show you a map here. Yes, look at this map. You can see that at the edge of the Caribbean plate, you have a string of volcanoes that are found in the Eastern Caribbean. So notice those red triangles, okay? Those red triangles are indicative of a volcano. So look at the edge of the Eastern Caribbean plate. That's where the Lesser Antilles is or the Eastern Caribbean island. So many of those islands, most of them are volcanic, all right? And there are some famous volcanoes in the Caribbean. You have Mount Pele, all right? Which is on the island of Martinique. You have La Soufriere, which is on the island of St. Vincent. And you have Mount St. Catherine, which is on the island of Grenada. So if you guys were ever to take a cruise and you visit the Eastern Caribbean, you will see lots of volcanoes, all right? And some of them are not active anymore, so you can go and take a tour of these volcanoes. And then of course, when we look at this map again, we see that we have many volcanoes that are in Central America. Now notice that they are along the edge of the Caribbean plate, which meets the Cocos plate. So you can see that where those two plates meet, it's tectonically active. And so those are volcanoes, those areas, those countries there have volcanoes lying in the edge of their plates, all right? Now, if you look at this map, you can also see that the Bahamas, we don't have any volcanoes because we're not on the edge of a plate boundary or margin, all right? but we know we still have other, our natural hazard, which are, which are hurricanes. So it's review time. So let's see what you guys have learned today. Well, we talked about what is a volcano. We said that it's basically a landform that is built up from molten rock or lava, okay? It's a landform, a mountain that is built up over time, over a long period of time, from 
the rocks within the Earth's crust. And then we talked about the various parts of a volcano, all right? We have the magma chamber, we have the main vent, we have the side vent or side vents, we have the crater, and then of course, we can have an ash cloud, all right? And then once the volcano erupts and that magma comes out, the name changes to lava, and you can get a lava flow. And then guys, we looked at the stages of volcanism, the three stages that volcanoes can be in or pass through, which are active, dormant, and of course, extinct. Now, I see that it's almost 9.40. And so that means that we have come to the end of today's lesson. However, you guys have some activities for me to do, all right? And so what I want you to do before I talk about those activities is to type in the answer to this riddle. It says, what do you call a cute volcano? So think about it. What would you call a cute volcano? Type your answers in the chat. Let me see what you come up with. What do you call a cute volcano? <laughs> yes, I see some of you went ahead and you Google that real quickly, right? Yes, it's lava bowl. Get it? Lava bowl. Right, it's the name of a cute volcano. Anyway, guys. That's my time. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our lesson on the outer planets. In today's lesson, you will be able to Name the four outer planets. Distinguish between the outer planets. And compare and contrast the inner and outer planets. Before we begin, let's see what you remember from our previous lesson. Do you remember how many planets make up the solar system? If you said eight, you were correct. What are the names of the four inner planets? Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Good job. Can you tell me what separates the inner planet from the outer planet? If you said the asteroid belt, you were correct. Do you remember which planet is the only planet known to support life? Here's a hint. It's the third planet from the sun. Correct, the Earth. Do you remember which planet is also known as the red planet? If you said Mars, you are correct. Let's move on to the outer planets. The outer planets. 
the outer planets are also called the gas giants. Can you tell me why they're called the gas giants? It's in its name. They are large and they're made mostly of gas. The name of the four outer planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Let's take a closer look at the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun. It is the largest planet in our solar system. Its energy causes a circular storm known as the Great Red Spot. And if you look closely at a picture of Jupiter, you can see the Great Red Spot on its surface. Next up is the planet Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun. It is the second largest planet in the solar system. Saturn is most famous for its many bright rings. Although all of the outer planets has rings, Saturn is the only, only planet whose rings can be seen from Earth. Next up is the planet Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun and the smallest of the outer planets. It is a blue-green ball of gas and liquid. Uranus spins on its side. Our final planet is the planet Neptune. Neptune is the eighth planet from the Sun. It is the farthest away from the Sun. Like Jupiter, Neptune also has circular storms on its surface, but they do not last as long as Jupiter's storms. And if you look closely at the picture of Neptune, you will see a great dark spot, which is a circular storm, sometimes called the great dark spot. Let's compare the inner and the outer planets to see how they are different. We have learned that the inner planets have rocky surfaces. The outer planets are made mostly of gas. The inner planets have no more than two moons. Mercury has no moons, Venus has no moons, Earth has one moon, and Mars has two moons. The outer planets have many moons. The inner planets are smaller in size. The outer planets are larger in size. The inner planets are on the inside of the asteroid belt. The outer planets are on the outside of the asteroid belt. The inner planets are closer to the sun, but the outer planets are farther from the sun. The inner planets have no rings. The outer planets are surrounded by rings.